Do you know that 70% of your immune system is within your digestive tract? One of the best ways to support your immune system is by eating a well-balanced diet, establishing a good sleeping habit, and regularly incorporating probiotics in your diet. Probiotics contain live bacteria that help regulate immune responses, defend your gut from infections, and feed your gut-friendly bacteria to create antibodies to help protect your immune system against pathogens. And one of the best ways to get probiotics is by eating fermented foods, and I'm going to show you an amazing sauerkraut recipe to promote that. Stay tuned. So first thing you want to do is wash and cut a cabbage and even after cutting it I also soak the pieces in um, vinegar with water and a little bit of salt. Soak it a little bit and then wash it really good. So I'm using a smaller size cabbage maybe about three pounds and of course you want to chop it up too. This is optional but you don't have to. I like to add a little bit of carrots in mine. So the first thing is you want to use about a half a tablespoon of salt per pound of cabbage. So I'm not measuring here or weighing anything. I'm just estimating, but those are the numbers. Half a tablespoon of salt per pound of cabbage. One thing I should mention is don't use table salt because of the bleaching agents that they use, the iodines and anti-caking agent. It will mess up the probiotics and defeat the whole purpose of making this to begin with. So try to use natural salt like sea salt or pink Himalayan salt if you have that. The reason why we use salt when we ferment is to prevent the growth of bad bacteria, but at the same time, promote good microbes that is well needed for a good probiotics. Don't laugh now, don't judge. I'm using sandwich bags as gloves. Um, I still haven't bought some food gloves that I can feel comfortable using with food. But I mean, I see people use their bare hands when they do this, but I don't think that's a good idea because you don't want any mixture of, you know, bacteria in this or like anything that's dirty it will mess up the whole process so you want to really rub this together and kind of give it a good bruise just to release that water to create its own brine and once it's well massaged maybe for about 15 minutes or so you can put it away for about 30 minutes and um, go back and continue massaging and i like to use this pestle thing to um, pound it so that there will be more brine drawn out of it forgot to mention but the other purpose of adding salt to this is to help draw out um, the water from the cabbage um, to create more brine so I'm just going to go ahead and keep pounding some arm work out here. Pound, pound, pound. And then I am going to massage it one more time. The longer you pound and massage it, the more um, liquid you're going to get. And the more liquid you get, the better because you want this to be submerged totally into liquid so that it will be preserved and fermented without growing bacteria, you know, the bad kind. Once this is done, I put it away again for about 30 more minutes and now I'm going to transfer it in this mason jar. And you can feel free to use uh, utensils for this, but I just don't feel like having to rinse a utensil with tap water and putting that in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and continue to use this makeshift glove of mine. And then when I put it in this jar, I go ahead and pound it just a little bit more making sure everything is compacted and that the liquid is like, you know, enough to cover everything. And I decided to add apple cider vinegar because I know that has probiotics of its own too. And plus I want this a little bit sour. So I'm adding about maybe two uh, tablespoons of that. That's optional. That's just something that I came up with, I guess, <laughs> just to try it out. Once everything is compacted and submerged, I like to add cling wrap on top before I put my weights on it. 
And the reason why you want to weigh something heavy on it is so that the cabbage um, stays submerged and that, you know, everything stays preserved and you don't have any bad bacteria growing in it or mold or, you know, some yucky stuff. So I am going to use another handy dandy uh, invented by me kind of weight. <laughs> I am just using this little glass shot. There are actually mason jars and equipments that are made just for preserving, but I don't do this all the time. So there's a shot glass that I'm using. It's kind of heavy enough, so I just push that in there. And then you want to use a coffee filter to cover this up. That way air can be released as well. So there it is. Looking like Sister Minnie over here. MashaAllah. He says, this is for Sister Minnie. Sorry, I had to include Sister Mini over there. But after two weeks, by the way, you put this away to ferment for two to three weeks. So I did mine um, for two weeks, and here it is. So as you can see, the color had changed a little bit. And let's see what it looks like. And when I opened it, uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of rust on the lid and this is why I like to use a cling wrap uh, look at that yeah so anyway the only struggle here was trying to get this thing out yeah so I may use something different next time oh, after the struggle I was finally able to get it out so um it's gonna look a little ugly here but I'm just taking the plastic out of it and I'm going to transfer it into another jar and another thing about this is because of its color it's going to be a little messy and by the way you can choose to use regular um, cabbage but I prefer the red cabbage because it's higher in antioxidants um, beta carotene and other amazing things um, so I'm just going to go ahead and transfer it in here it's going to get a little messy but oh well and this actually came out pretty good and um i made this video a while back but this lasted for almost three weeks and you can use this in various dishes but i like to use this in my salads sandwiches and also there's this african dish that i like to make and put sauerkraut in it so um yeah but you can use it just like regular sauerkraut add it to your sandwiches um salads or you know whatever savory dish that you like and this is one of the ways that i like to use it It also tastes so amazingly good with this avocado and chicken sandwich that I made. Anyway, this wraps it up for this video. I hope you learned something from it. Um, if you did and you liked it, please give it a like. Also, if you're into leveling up to become a healthier version of yourself, make sure you subscribe and hit that post notification button so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Also follow me on my TikTok account for short content on recipes and awesome tips on beauty. I hope you have a blessed day, night, evening, wherever you are, and I hope to catch you on my next video.